Dean Dark is an absurd, over-the-top comedy horror adventure that is intended for older audiences. Content warnings can be found in the episode descriptions. Hello and welcome to Dean Dark, a comedy horror adventure real play podcast loosely based on Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition and starring some of history's most infamous monsters. I'm Danger Dan Jers, and I'm your host slash Crypt Keeper. Hi, my name's Jordan. I play Larry Talbot, a lycanthropic warlock. And last time, Larry was very gutsy and was the first one through the portal. And he found himself in this really weird world where at first he could see nothing but red. He saw himself transform into a werewolf, but he kept complete consciousness and agency. So even though he was in this really weird, bizarre, dreamlike world, he was able to run around and feel what the power of the werewolf form had and could give him. And he had a sick pair of striped overalls, but we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> and then found an old friend and they had a little bit of a conversation. Larry, since he was all by himself, was trying some new tactics that didn't work out for him in the moment. They literally blew up in his face, but it's fine. We're going to use it as a learning experience and move forward from there. Hello, I am Grayson. I play Jack Griffin, the Invisible Man, the party's rogue. Uh, Jack went into a portal, was running around trying not to get attack on Titaned, and then <laughs> somewhere along the line, he ran into Rainer. Ooh. Ooh. And uh, yeah, Jack is not looking very good right now. Oh, no. I mean, if you look on the ground, you'll probably see a giant pool of blood. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh. Wait, how can we tell he's invisible? <laughs> also, Grayson, roll perception. Oh, uh -oh. No. We've never done rolls during the recap. Uh, that's a 14 for me. With a 14, you notice that you no longer have in your inventory the key to Rainer's safe. Of course. Instead, you have a prosthetic nose. Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm so glad. Oh, that's yes. good. Hello, I am Aaron. I play the Phantom of the Opera, our bard. Last session, I got to cast a spell and cause a hallucination in a 50s housewife and then use a whip like a grappling hook, all as part of that balance session. <laughs> <laughs> and then I hopped into an old familiar setting, uh, took a trip back to Oxford and saw our friend the False Hydra again, and I was unable to kill it because of the beauty underneath. Oh. oh, oh! I know what you're referencing. I know what you're referencing. I am Daniel <laughs> Cruz. I am playing Imhotep the Mummy. Everybody's being very coy, so I'm just going to say, I think there's still milk in places that there shouldn't be milk. Most places. <laughs> 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 I got to do a really cool Spider-Man slingshot thing with my bandages. That was pretty sick. And um, I'm not going to lie, for the time that we've been away, I have been agonizing over how to comprehend what was going on in my little session. All I know is that my friend on my arm, who may or may not be an interdimensional orange cat, <gasps> is going to protect me from anything else that might come after me. That being said, the rest of it was a lot. <laughs> we it got weird. It got real it weird. It got very weird. Like the way I I I told this to Dan that I'm still <laughs> unpacking and comprehending it in a good way. Hi, I'm Janae. I play Carmilla Malarka Karnstein, vampiric spawn and blood hunter. Last time we met, a very large chocolate escapade happened. Um I don't know who Count Chocula is, but <laughs> I think I would like to. He looks like a very upstanding <laughs> citizen and um, not at all like a serial killer. <laughs> Tee -hee. <laughs> I've never wondered, except for, you know, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, what it would be like to drown in a bowl of cereal. 
but um, it was very visceral because I didn't know what was happening. (laughs) (laughs) And Carmilla was not prepared to meet the two people on Earth who, I mean, quite frankly, wish her dead about a thousand times. And, you know, that's fair. (laughs) (laughs) It was a really difficult conversation, but looks like the beginning of Carmilla's road to redemption has begun. Ooh. Hi, I'm Ben Magnet. I play Mary Frankenstein, our barbarian. And last time I went to what is possibly the most out of left field slash greatest plane of existence ever. Because <laughs> the second I figured out what exactly was happening, I was on my floor cackling for five minutes straight. Dan can vouch he was there. Yeah. It was pretty good. It was amazing. I got to admit. After I got out of being mixed in with a whole bunch of berries, if you know what I mean, I woke up in the ethereal plane in Northampton, where I saw my Mind Flayer creator, Victor Frankenstein, just in complete and utter meditation. And also, I saw evidence of him being up to his old tricks again. We're going to have to put a peed in that because we have other things to deal with. But he also had a message for me. Rainer the Prince of Death, the Prince of Undeath. And according to Victor Frankenstein, there's three entities in total. So we're going to have to put another peen in that and pucker that sucker later. But yeah, I was able to um, get out of Northampton by harnessing the lightning. I had a really cool Zack Snyder slow-mo moment and I zapped back out and I met up with the rest of the group inside the sanitarium. So here I am, ready to rock and roll. So with that, let's jump back to the sanitarium. So, before we get started, let's have Jordan do your cards of the day. Okay, I don't know what's going to be more useful. I have the option between the chariot, which gives me and everybody else in my group plus 10 movement speed. So, maybe we want to sprint out of here, I don't know. Or I can take the sun, which good old pal the sun gives me resistance to light and radiant damage, and it also makes my radiant and fire damage extra spicy. I mean, when have we ever consistently run away from a fight? Yeah, Yeah, I mean, we really split the difference. We fight for a little bit and then yeet out of there. Um, Just saying, if you buff my movement speed, I get to be Shadow the Hedgehog again. (laughs) (laughs) Honestly, Jordan, you know, the Dark Souls player in me wants the sun so I could just yell, praise the sun. But also I'm like, ah, uh, yes. But also I'm like, hmm, that movement speed is pretty good, too. Yeah. I mean, if we praise the sun, Emotep's going to give us some side yeah. eye. <laughs> I don't know how he feels about that still. <laughs> <laughs> um, You know, let's do chariot. Let's uh, let's juice everybody up. Gotta go fast. Hell Yes. Okay, so when I got zapped by the lightning in Northampton, as I'm flying, I'm also imagining I'm kind of like holding on to it and a bit of the lightning is riding with me. So as I'm coming in, if anyone else is in the room, they just somehow hear the melodic tones of Metallica's Ride the Lightning. <laughs> Just burst through the portal door in superhero land with my hair all spiky from the electricity and then the melodic tones of the heaviest of metal guitars just slowly fades out (laughs) and I just stand up with my hair all spiky from the electricity and I go, whoa, okay, that was cool. Did anyone else see that? And the answer is no, because you were first. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. yeah. So good job. Good job of going first. <laughs> All right. So if that's the case, I look around. I see. It was like, no. <laughs> no one ever sees the cool things that Ben oh, does. Yeah. I'm like looking around. I see I'm the first one here. I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? Ugh. It's okay, Mary. <laughs> The last thing that happened to Larry before he came careening through the portal is he ripped a piece of paper in half, just sent him careening backwards. And so as he was going through the portal and blasting through, once he comes out the other side, he just slams flat on his back, head cracks on the ground, and it's just like, oh, oh, that didn't go according to plan. Larry. I rush over to help oh, Larry out. Larry. Oh, God, are you okay? That was a lot. Uh, am I okay? Are you okay? Literally just hit your head on the pavement. Uh, Here, let me help you up. Oh, thank you. Uh, clamper to my feet and I'm like, God, okay. 
Um, you know, I am going to learn from my mistakes and and handle that differently next time. But wow, that was a lot. Um, how are you? Your your hair is very spiky. That's neat. Yeah, I wrote a lightning bolt over here. I'm actually kind of upset no one saw it. That sounds so cool. I, I'm upset I didn't see that. I know. Thank you. It was rad. There was this music I was playing. I don't know where the hell it was coming from, but it sounded awesome. I wish awesome. I got done with my thing a lot faster because that was quite unpleasant, but... Oh my gosh, where where are we? I think we're in the sanitarium. And yeah, also think And where is everyone else? I don't know. I was the first here. You're you just came out next, so hold on a second. Jack can his body flop through the portal and just like slap on the floor? I was I was like just being fish. told. No, no. Okay, so it's like a so. fish being pulled out of a <laughs> So literally, I was just about to say, let me go next so that way I can bring down expectations. All right, go for it. <laughs> uh, so Jack literally just flops down on the ground and you just see a knife sticking in his leg and just pool of blood. Oh my oh. God. Oh, there he is, Jack. Oh no. my God, Larry, no. help him. Uh, I rush over to him like, no, 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 no. Uh, and I, I try and stabilize his wounds, like apply pressure to the leg and wherever he might be bleeding. Um, can I roll a medicine check? Go for it. Roll medicine. I, for some reason, am good at that. Uh, careful. Uh, don't touch that. 19. With a 19, Grayson regain a d4 of hit points. Ooh. Oh, 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 oh. What happened to you? Can, can Amos have go next? Sure. Preempting him, there's a scent of, like, dust. And whereas everybody else comes flopping out, he's just walking on out. And as he walks, he is followed by the scent of lasagna. God damn it. <laughs> he looks at Mary, gives him a nod. Mary looks at Larry, nods. Larry looks at Jack and sees Larry, like, pushing pressure down on his wound. Uh... Puts his hand and goes, Jack, and I'm going to cast Healing Word. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to regain an HP. Ooh, nice. Well, I'm feeling a little better. How is everybody doing? Just nonchalant. Uh, Much better now. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, in the hotel, are you, how are you? Fine. Why do I smell food? Oh, don't worry about that. Um, I'm kind of worried about that. I too am also kind of worried about <laughs> Just that. Just don't. Don't worry about that. Hmm. You know what? After my experience in the portal, I have decided from this point out, I'm not going to worry about things anymore. You know? It, it put me behind in a lot of stuff. It made me take too long to make decisions. There is no more worry from Larry going forward. But, but Jack, can you stand? Are you all right? Yeah. I don't know what Emotep um, just... I, I mean, Emotep touched me and I feel better, so... Well, that's good. We're not going to worry about why. <laughs> All right, you know what? That's it. I'm coming out. <laughs> Rapier drawn. And for the perceptive members of the party, you might notice there's no blood on it. And in fact, you would think that perhaps this blade has still never touched anything. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. I can't believe we're all back in. Oh, man, I wasn't even here for this. What did we do to Jack? <laughs> uh, nothing. He just fell out of the portal like this. There was a knife in his leg. Uh, Imhotep came out, gave him some some heels and now he's feeling how are you feeling buddy are you talking to me yeah dead man <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes i'm talking to you i'm just you know chilling up against this wall <sighs> i'm literally waiting for everyone to show up because i'm assuming everyone's going to ask what ended up happening but we could just skip all that because we're in a non-worry mood i'm a little worried there's a lot of blood in here <laughs> i am trying not to be worried <laughs> no we're fine we, yeah, we, no, we, we don't need to worry. And just looks... All right, that's it. Rapier goes back into sheath. Gun comes out. Jack, what the fuck happened in the portal? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to start looking at the portal, seeing if everyone is already done popping through. And that's when Carmilla comes through. Carmilla is got her head, like, in her hands, just like, why did I say that? Why? I, I, I had so many opportunities to say other nice things, better things, more uh, coherent things. And instead, <laughs> I just, I fucked it up. I just fucked it up. I had the exact, ah, I should have written a speech. I should have written a speech. She comes through and nearly trips over Jack. Oh, hey. So what's going on, guys? <laughs> For real, though, Jack, what the fuck happened in there? All the rest of us seem 
pretty well okay. So you fucked it up. I quickly take the pieces of paper that were in my hand and like shove them in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone go ahead and roll perception. <laughs> Including Larry. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, nat one. Nat one. Yeah. Oh! I've never noticed anything in my goddamn life. <laughs> I am just so dull. I, I, the smell of lasagna is overwhelming me. I got a five. Thirteen. Off to a great start, team. I rolled a three, but my perception's a plus five, so it's an wow. eight. Wow. Wow, everyone's really imperceptive today. So, Imhotep, with your nat one perception, you see out of the corner of your eye the silhouette of a cat moving ever so faintly. You turn to look at it, and it is again just out of your field of vision in the corner of your eye. Ooh. Oh, man. I start spinning in a circle like I'm chasing my tail. I will find you! <laughs> Phantom, you see exactly what Larry does, and you feel like it's pretty suspicious. And then you get a little echo in your head of the Dies Irae. And it never happened. You're right back to where you were with Jack a couple seconds ago. You never saw God damn anything. It. <laughs> then uh, I had a 17. 17. So, Carmilla, you are the only one who is not caught up in everything that is happening to be able to notice that there is a lot more movement and presence about you than when you first came into the sanitarium. You hear and are more sensitive to and more in tune with the movement of spirits about and throughout. And you also notice the lack of one particular spirit. The lack of a particular Ooh. spirit. Sweet baby boy, is he not here? Ooh, 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 ask me. Oh wait, no, I got a five, never mind. <laughs> 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 you, with the movement of all the spirits around you, you don't sense Vordenberg. Man, you gotta love it when the player knows what's going on, but I roll too low to yeah. get it. You're kind of disoriented from lack of blood, I suspect. You've got a lot going on. I physically feel better, but I'm drained right now. <laughs> So, Invisible Man, with your five on perception, you aren't taking in the information of anything around you because you are concentrated, one, on your own pain and blood loss and altered mental state, and two, your hands in your pockets going instinctively towards where you've been keeping Rainer's key, and you instead feel the shape of a prosthetic nose. I shove my hand in my pocket and I just chuck it into the portal. <laughs> Remove from your inventory. <laughs> Prosthetic nose. It's okay, I've got others. I'm just angry. All right, y'all, I'm pretty sure Jack's lost it. We're throwing <laughs> things into the portal. I, it might be time to go. Wait, Dan, did I see anything? You see some movement from the south of you. And as you are looking out of the door of the solitary confinement unit, you see all throughout the hallways, movements of spirits locked in a sort of mindless routine. Even though within the ethereal realm, the presence of doors is more or less trivial. There are a handful of spirits that seem to still be confined to their cells. There are a few that seem to be moving freely about. And there's different spikes of energy going all throughout the walls of the intensive treatment unit that you are within. And the general air of unease and despair is starting to sink and weigh on your shoulders. But you don't mind. Yeah. Yeah, so seeing all the spirits and thinking about where I just came from and what kind of my connotation with spirits are right now, the chill of the situation is going to sink into my bones, but I'm not going to worry about it. All right, guys, uh, I'm bored of this room. Let's get out of here. I've got plans. Oh, now you're chatty. Oh, <laughs> good. <laughs> As you open the door and start to make your way down the hall, immediately to your east... There is a cell with a spirit 
that is on all fours, desperately scraping away at the floor back and forth. If you look at the hands, you can see that they've deteriorated, starting with bones at the fingertips going back to flayed skin slightly higher up as it is desperately clawing back and forth as though it is obsessively trying to scrub at the surface beneath it. Ooh. Everyone rolls stealth. Who? Oh no. This is not going to go well. <laughs> Fug. And this is going to be a group stealth check, so as long as <laughs> more than half of you pass, Sorry, you all everybody. Pass. I rolled a 17 with my modifier. I rolled an 18 with my modifier. Three. I rolled an unnatural 20. I got a 24. Five. We're golden. <laughs> so this particular spirit does not notice you as it is obsessively fixated on trying to clean and sanitize the floor beneath it as its ethereal bones drag against what would be the floor and still manages to scrape. You do see immediately to your west, there is another spirit that you hear wails of pain and anguish coming from as this spirit is clutching onto its head and slamming against the wall. Delightful. Roll another group stealth check. Oh boy. That one's a 12 this time for me. <laughs> Seven. Oh, that I'm one's a five. I'm going down the hall whistling at this point. 18. What are you all doing? <laughs> Walking down a hall. What are you doing? 19. I got a 26. As this spirit is clutching its head, writhing in pain and banging against the wall, it turns to see you passing by and runs towards where the edge of its cell would be and begins to reach out towards you. Everybody make a constitution saving throw. Uh, 19 for me. A natural 20 for my 15 for my constitution saving throw. 10. 12. Get it together, guys. I know, my rolls have been so crappy. <laughs> I rolled an 18 on the last stealth, everyone else. <laughs> All right, so Phantom, you begin to develop a splitting headache. And you start to hear a sort of loud tinnitus-like sound in the back of your head as this spirit flickers out of existence. Decrease your wisdom by oh. one. Oh, oh, shit. Oh, what? And roll a d6. Five. Reduce your max HP oh. by five. Oh, my God. What the fuck? Uh, that was just one spirit. I knew there was something special about spirits, and I could not remember what it was. This goes away, right, eventually? Guys? The silence. The silence. Oh. Uh. You do feel that it is the lingering noise and pain through your head that has gone ignored within this specter for so long that is causing this debilitation. And if you can get to the root of what is plaguing this spirit, you might be able to get to the root of what is plaguing you. Ew, we gotta have feelings times with the spirits? <laughs> but I just decided I don't have feelings anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's how it works. Uh, Larry. <laughs> Larry, that is actually kind of concerning. We need to talk about that. Uh, don't worry about it. We're not going to worry about things anymore. Oh, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm going to worry about it. This is bad because, like, look at how... <laughs> I mean, can I talk with Phantom? Yeah, does he show any, like, physical, like, wincing from that? Well, okay, so here's the bad news. The tinnitus sound is very freaky, so I was going to say that Phantom's probably going to straight bail out of this whole building in a balls out sprint. Hey man, you got 10 extra movement speed. So what are the consequences <laughs> of that? Oh boy. You trigger all the ghosts? Yep. Oh boy. All right, so first what I will need you to do is make a dexterity saving throw in that case, as opposed to stealth. Oh good. I mean, I was gonna offer something to help everyone, but. What's our opinion of nat ones? <laughs> 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 um. <laughs> Generally. <laughs> As you sprint straight south, you pass another cell with two spirits inside that are more violent and angry and are lashing out at each other. There is one that is strangling the other while the other is thrashing wildly in place. They see you sprinting past 
and the one that has its hands around the throat of the other releases and jumps out at you. Make another constitution saving throw. The phantom oh, about good. to become a real phantom. Yeah, it's gonna have so many. 15. With a 15, you are able to avoid the possession of this spirit, but with your nat one, you are going to continue running full speed straight below you to a room where the furniture begins to slide and shift around in place. And you see a pulsating mass of very faint energy that spikes up. You will need to make another dexterity saving throw. This is just tremendous. Mm -hmm. I hope the party's doing good. Oh, uh. (laughs) Stop with the nat ones. Four. Okay. (laughs) It's not a nat one. No, but it's not good Uh. either. (laughs) So you are going to take 3d6 force damage. Oh. Oh. Oh As this pulsating mass of energy sends the furniture spiraling around the room and slams into you as you run frantically through. Mary's gonna have to carry Phantom out of here. Probably. 11 damage, so I get just decked by a sofa. (laughs) (laughs) Is it at least the cushy side? Do you continue? Um, I would like to use a command spell. (laughs) This is a chair raising experience. Oh my god. I'm gonna stab you. (laughs) If the command spell fails, I am still sprinting to get out of here because I assume the tinnitus is coming from in the building. (laughs) It is coming from within your head. Yeah, but I haven't found that out yet. (laughs) (laughs) That's fair. So first go ahead and do the command spell. I'm not going to let chair raising experience go. (laughs) Oh no, no. No, you're not. (laughs) You're right. (laughs) All right, so Jack's gonna go for a sneak attack on Carmilla. No need, just Carmilla, D4 psychic damage. Fantastic. (laughs) (laughs) Emotep is going to point at Phantom, his eyes are going to get extra bright, and he's going to just say, stop, and a wisdom saving throw. Hey, that just got a little bit more likely to happen. All right, I got three damage. (laughs) 13. Uh, My DC is 15, so you just stop in your tracks. All right, now it is very clear that Phantom is excruciatingly uncomfortable, particularly with the fact that it's messing with his hearing. You better be careful. Soon you're going to uh, not be able to have perfect pitch anymore. Or he perceives it that way. Soon does the archer malt, malt, malt. What? <laughs> also, uh, are there consequences to the fact that I'm in this dangerous poltergeist room and I have to stand still? Not immediately. Oh, good. <laughs> And then the cell that you ran past with the two spirits that were fighting each other, the one that did not attack you and remained in the cell, now makes a jump at the one outside of the cell and begins to pull at the spectral tendrils that are its hair. And the two continue once again, focusing on each other in their fight as they are both in the doorway of their cell and everyone else has yet to pass. Mm. I'll be honest, I feel real bad Um, for these ghosts because like they've been trapped here for how many years? Stuck in a, like, like their whole life was pain and now they're stuck here reliving that pain over and over and over again. It's okay, they won't be stuck here for very long. I'm gonna collect them all. Yeah. (laughs) Imhotep is going to attempt his stealth to kind of get by the two spirits and try to like make his way towards Phantom to pull him back to the group. That's what we're going for right now. Go ahead and roll perception first, then stealth. I can do day. Also, I'd like to check something. Uh, While he's rolling, what would you like to check? Larry. Uh, yeah? Can you magically tether us with those cards? Tether? Like, like, can we talk to each other over distances? Can you use, like, a sending stone? I... A cell stone? Basically. Don't know. Dan, can I use them like sending stones? If you have the sending spell, then yes. Uh, the closest thing I have is message. My perception check was 22. With a 22, you faintly see a flash into the material plane. And you can see that the cell that these two specters are fighting over, you can see two bodies lying near each other, looking distressed and agitated, while also being covered in gore and insects, Mm -hmm. trapped within this cell. Oh, yikes. They look pretty worse for wear. Yeah. That's really sad, y'all. 
Now your stealth. Okay, now my stealth. Oh, that's not nearly as good. Seven? With a seven, make a constitution saving throw. Oh, welcome to Team Spirit. Yay. Uh, maybe not. Uh, 17. You are able to evade, resist, and hold them off and are not possessed by them. While I'm pushing them back, he's like, I feel your pain. I understand. And I'm sorry. If there is anything I can do once we are finished with our business here to free your souls, I will do what I can in the name of Osiris. And he tries to, like, push them back as nicely as he can. He's not trying to be mean about this. As you resist and as you start to push them back, they again get a little bit too close in proximity to each other and again restart their violence towards one another. Could I grab one of them with my sacred bindings and try to pull it away from the other? Uh. <laughs> Roll Arcana. Twelve. With a twelve, you are unsuccessful, but there is no further consequence. All right, well, I... What I will say with your twelve... You go through them, and for the slightest moment, your bandages flicker into the material plane and nudge one of the bodies slightly aside. Oh, I see. Okay, first things first. We reach with our bandages and we kind of pull Phantom out of the poltergeist room. And yeah, Imhotep is very concerned about the well-being of these souls. These souls that, like him, shouldn't be here. They should definitely have moved on. So he's going to turn back to them. And when his bandages flashed into the material plane, and when he looked in the material plane, is there anything that he might be able to manipulate in the material plane to further separate these bodies from each other? Roll constitution. So here we go again. Ah, uh, eight. He really wants to help. With an eight, you again manage to pierce the veil ever so slightly and are able to just kind of flick one or two insects off one of the bodies, but you aren't able to get enough of a grasp to be able to really manipulate what is going on. He kind of sighs and makes a note to himself about when he gets back to the material plane about what he's going to do. Okay, will you set me free? <laughs> set you free of what? The command? I can't move. Oh. <laughs> That's right. Just kind of stands in front of him. <laughs> Menacingly. You are right at the edge of the swirling vortex of furniture, and... Every couple of seconds, just the very bottom of a chair leg bonks against your head, or a little <laughs> box just kind of bounces off of your chest. <laughs> Not enough to deal you any HP damage, but enough to be annoying. Please let me out. Dan, can I reach into the bag of holding and see if something was left in there from another person by chance, like a marker or something? Marker, no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Interesting. What specifically are you looking for? I want to jigglypuff him. <laughs> what does that mean? What? Please explain. Draw uh, his jigglypuff face. from the old anime. Whenever anybody fell asleep, she get up, pop a cap off a marker, and draw faces on them. <laughs> if he is stuck and cannot move because of my command, I want to draw. I want to draw on his mask a little bit. Oh, I understand. Okay, <laughs> yes, I, I get you. Yeah, go ahead and roll a d20. Uh, six. <laughs> All right, this is probably the best possible time for you to have rolled below a 10. <laughs> Even if just has his oh, devious no. grin on his face oh, into the bag. So as you rummage into the bag, you grab your hand around what feels like a marker, and as you remove it from the bag, you feel it begin to alter and change form. And the second that it passes through the barrier, is it? I it wonder. expands in your hand as what was once a marker is now a weasel. <laughs> um, I'm so holding this weasel. I'm like, ha ha, I'm going to. It looks at this weasel holding by the scruff of its neck. That was not a mark. What? I. <laughs> the weasel is squirming and writhing, goes to bite at you to try to run away. Um, Let me pull up a stat block real quick. <laughs> a hostile weasel. <laughs> what are we keeping in that bag? That is an unnatural 20 to hit. That definitely hits. Oh my hits. god. Wow. That'll be three damage. 
It's fine. Uh, I drop the weasel. You drop the weasel, and it sprints away from you at full speed. Towards the other spirits and gathers their attention. <laughs> Does that break his concentration? I'm going to say that breaks the concentration. I'm just watching the weasel <laughs> run away. Huh. So the weasel begins to <laughs> sprint 30 feet to the east away from you. You're going to go catch the weasel. <laughs> well, unfortunately, I am free, so... Oh, no! Yeah, this is all bad. Yeah, Imhotep watches the weasel run. It's like, well, then, fa- where did the phantom go? Where did the phantom go? And the phantom is, like, also gone, took off in the same direction. Okay, I guess we ought to get a move on, then. So as phantom and this weasel sprint they make their way towards a larger more open room with a few individual cells that are mostly unoccupied as the spirits of a few what appear to be orderlies are making their way through these cells and are stuck in their routine as they are preparing these rooms over and over again. There is one spirit that is looming a little bit larger than the rest of them with a clipboard in hand that looks up at the commotion that you are dealing that is ordering around these other three orderlies and seeing you and this weasel sprinting straight towards it distends its jaw, points at you, and lets out a horrific, high-pitched shriek. Make a constitution saving throw. I'm sure that's going to go great. (laughs) Love loud noises, apparently. Six. Uh... You know you're going to kill me. That's going to kill me, combined with my six. For the record, (laughs) I would give you inspiration, but you already have some. (laughs) With a six, that does not save. So overtaken by the wail of a banshee, You are rooted in place and take 3d6 psychic damage. And as this head orderly points and wails, the other three spirits look to her, then look to you, and begin to begrudgingly advance. All right, party, it's time. Hop on in. Everybody else, you can react at this point. Enough has happened. I'm going to run past these ghosts. Dexterity saving throw. You got it, bud. Hey, that's not too shabby. 18. 18. These specters momentarily stop their violence against each other, reach out to swipe towards you, and you juke them. I'm like, yeah, buddies, you don't want to try and get in here. It's a mess. (laughs) Then another dexterity saving throw as you pass through the room of swirling furniture being agitated by a poltergeist. Yeah, let's see. Big money, big money. Hmm, so I have some inspiration, and that was a nat one. Ooh. Oh. Frick, okay. The universe decided not. It was meant to be. Did you roll another nat one? Nat one, get decked by a chair and die. That's your destiny. <laughs> All right, you're going to take 6d6 force damage. Holy crap. What? Furnish him. Oh, please stop, we'll die. <laughs> Janae only, d4 psychic yeah. damage. Thank you. Dan, are you Carmilla's rolling? Carmilla's just gonna drop dead out of nowhere. <laughs> just flop over. She's and gonna laugh herself yeah, to death. I'm gonna <laughs> leave her ass there. Uh, that was 21. Okay, so yeah, I sneak past the ghosts. Pretty cool, pretty stylishly. And then as I'm feeling real good about that, just a futon smacks me in the back of the head where I previously cracked it on the floor. And I just- Oh no! I oh. face plant into the cobblestone below. Oh, I'm gonna just nap here for a second. Larry! Mary, before you go, did you want one of these? And I hold up an invisibility potion. Yeah, it can't hurt. Go ahead and the three of you roll perception. The three of you being Jack, Mary, and Carmilla. Oh, what? Not me, face planted on the floor? Go ahead and roll perception at disadvantage. It's some beautiful <laughs> brickwork. I'm, it's very impressive. That's a 16 for my perception. It's a four for my floor check. Unnatural 21. So with a four, Larry, you see briefly into the material plane and the floor looks almost identical. There is slightly more color in the floor (laughs) on the material plane compared to the mostly monochrome and desaturated floor that you see through the ethereal plane. Hmm. Neat. (laughs) Jack, you briefly see into the material plane 
and you see the cells around you in disarray. A couple of the bodies have some insects on them. One in the corner is covered in insects in an otherwise spotless room. There is one where there is a body currently has some insects surrounding the head, and it looks like there is some trauma to the head of the body. In the cell where the two specters have been fighting, you see the two bodies that are splayed out near there that are not dismembered, but that are torn open and have some serious physical injuries to them. You see some overturned furniture in the room to the south, and you see some more bodies laid out in the room to the west. Mary, with your 21, you get the feeling you should be able to interact with the material plane through successful constitution checks in order to, in very small doses, exert your will and manipulate objects on the material plane. Oh. Wish we had a wheelbarrow so we could just grab all the bodies and get out of there. Wish we didn't have somebody sprinting ahead of us that so we have to worry about that so we can do the thing that we're supposed to be doing in the dungeon. <laughs> I'm going to try and, like, walk, sneak or something through the uh, poltergeist room. Make a dexterity saving throw. Yeah, okay. My dexterity save was a nine, so how much bludgeoning damage are we taking? <laughs> that is 3d6. That room is super spicy for all of us. Yeah. 12. Okay. Uh, so I'm down to 36 HP. Hey, I'll trade you. I've taken too much psychic <laughs> damage. I wonder why. I wonder what yeah. would have given you the psychic <laughs> damage. I don't know. Some psycho. Yeah, maybe you should keep doing it. Oh, are you telling Yo, me? No, we cannot be wiped <laughs> on the transit <laughs> session. We can't. <laughs> but I'm able to get through the room with taking just a little bit of damage as a chair comes and smacks me in the head. Oh, right. It should level. <laughs> just one of them just hits me in the shin. Oh, 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 oh. kind of hobbles through the rest of the room. <laughs> Let's jump back to Mary. All right, so I take the invisibility potion. I am now invisible for a little bit because I want to sneak past these ghosts. So then roll stealth with advantage. Nat 20. Ooh. Oh, yes, please. Thank you. Finally. <laughs> with a nat know, 20, right? I will say that you progress past both the specters and the poltergeist. And I pick up Larry on my way out. Thank you. You can bring Larry with you. Aww. Larry, don't freak out. It's me. It's only I'm only invisible for about a minute or so. <laughs> oh, it's it's God. okay. You're going to be fine, bud. I just levitate off the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Jack, you're super strong. <laughs> Holding Larry, I go up next to Imhotep, and I look at Imhotep and I'm like, so what's the play now? The furniture slows down slightly. The mass of energy in the center reforms to a question mark as it sees Larry levitate up and move away. <laughs> My little feet are kicking behind me. Then reforms back to essentially an orb and the furniture continues what it was doing before. I know it can't see me, but I flip it off. <laughs> and neither can Emotep. <laughs> nah, that's fine. That was more for Mary than for anyone else. That's fair. Gotta do it for you sometimes. Um, but I have an idea of how I can progress forward, so if you want to trade off and scoop up Phantom... Well, first I need to talk to Imhotep and ask him what the play is. Uh, so Imhotep watches Larry, who I'm just imagining is just kind of slumped as he's being carried under Mary's arm. Does that make sense? Does that sound right? Yeah. I imagine I'm yeah. being like grabbed around the waist and my arms and legs are like scraping exactly. the ground. Exactly. Just kind of like drooped over. Dragged all. Exactly. He sees Larry roll up next to him, just floating there, just like, I. What? Hi, Emotep. <laughs> Hello, Larry. <laughs> How's it going up here? Well, I think I broke my knee. I'll be able to fix that. Uh, Phantom is that way. He is currently running with the weasel, and you are floating. That's Mary. Yeah, that's me. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> <laughs> you goddamn invisible bastard. <laughs> you hit Sonic <laughs> Scream levels, Daniel. That was amazing. Uh, Daniel, if you don't have inspiration, you do now. <laughs> What? Yeah. The audio suppression up. couldn't even catch you. <laughs> Jack gave me one of his invisibility potions. It was allowed me to sneak past the two fighting spirits and the poltergeist in the room behind us, and I think I'll be able to help out Phantom. So I'm asking you, what am I looking at? How can I help Phantom? And can you hold on to Larry while I do the thing? I mean, do you expect me to carry him like you are doing so? No, no, just hold on to him. Make sure he doesn't oh, fall okay, over again. Okay, okay. 
I, I okay. believe I, what we should um, do right now is grab Phantom. If you can get the weasel, that'd be kind of cool. But the weasel is secondary. <laughs> <laughs> grab the Phantom. I. Okay. Bring grab him Phantom. back here. We wait for uh, everybody else to get hit in the shins. Don't get hit in the shins, by the way. I did not get hit in the shin. I take that as a win. It is a very good win. That is, I'm very proud of you. Um, <laughs> Back of the head, different story. Ah, oh, I see. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, Imhotep, this is everything is going belly up and he's just trying to kind of panic, put it all to get back together. Um, we should stick together. We should look into the rooms. I believe that those who um, are here... When you say we should stick together, Larry goes, oh wait, I have a plan. And then I poof into mist. <laughs> that is literally the opposite of stick together. You are now in several particles. You are, this is, you are, oh, Larry, this is, the plan is, I... Uh, <laughs> and I'm wee, as I'm just this fog mass. I cast gaseous form, by the way, that's what I do. That's what I assume. Yeah, I get that much. <laughs> just for technicality. He's just like, I... You, this isn't even I. Uh, I'll I'll go get Phantom. I'll bring him back. Thank you. All right. So I'm gonna toss it back to Jack and Carmilla. After the two of you do your thing, then the spirits will do their thing, and then back to everybody else. We are fighting, but like the hand slapping thing, you know. <laughs> <where> we're... <laughs> Jack's just offering, like, look, look, it'll t- it'll be no big deal. Like I just stab you a couple times, and you'll be fine. <laughs> Well, I have two things that I can stab you with. I'll just, you know, drink you out like a juice box. It'll be great. Uh, You'll love it. You wouldn't even do that with Capri Sun. You're a different story. That's like a snack. You're like, wait, <laughs> about to compliment him by accident. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. You're like a whole meal. <laughs> no, no. After that, I stealth away because I want to leave on that mark. <laughs> uh, Invisible Man, regain a D4 health. Oh, yay. <laughs> <laughs> Accidental compliment. So roll stealth to get past the two fighting specters, who, while you and Carmilla were arguing, they were the exact same distance and direction as the two of you, and just mirroring your entire argument yeah, yeah. But with fists <laughs> instead of words. Yeah. <laughs> My stealth was a 25. Uh, that passes. Fantastic. And what I'd like to try and do is... Uh, is there a floating armchair? Oh my god. <laughs> Explain. Are you gonna ride the armchair? <laughs> <laughs> what I would like to do is time it for Carmilla, so that way I could be sitting on the armchair, and then as I see that she's about to pass through, I could kick off of it to hopefully give her advantage. Oh, I thought you were going to, like... <laughs> no, I'm not trying to kick you. Uh, okay, I, I rolled pretty low for my, uh, stealth. Okay, so for a while I'm sitting in the chair just relaxing. Or, I mean, we'll see whatever. I'm just trying to think what I should have you roll for this. Um, I would say acrobatics, but that's just me. <laughs> I know me. you would say <laughs> acrobatics. <laughs> what I will say, roll sleight of hand to grab hold, then roll strength to hang on. Okay. That is a 21. You succeed. You are able to grab the leg of a passing chair. That's a 12. With a 12, you hang on, but you don't get up. So you are not in the chair. You are being dragged behind the chair as it is spiraling around the room. Good. Okay, and then whenever I can, I'll try to climb on top of it and hopefully try and do what I wanted to do. So, Carmilla, what was your... You rolled stealth, correct? Yeah, let me let me roll for that. Oh, so I'd like to... Emotep got to do it, and also the Flaming Skull got to do it. Ah. Uh. Yeah, basically. <laughs> it's like, Carmilla, when you get a chance, go past it like a huge signal. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled a nat 20. Um. <laughs> Carmilla's already on the other side. I'm just still waiting. <laughs> she walks on the opposite side of the chair so you don't see her. <laughs> what I want to do is basically jump onto a piece of furniture and just like make my way using the furniture over to the other side. Acrobatics, man. It's the way to go. 
you make it past the specters, you parkour over the furniture, and you the timing is exactly right so that Jack doesn't quite see you. So as he's yelling, Carmilla, or whatever it was you said, uh, you're already on the other side. Yeah, on my signal. <laughs> I'll give you the signal. Uh, can I give him a signal? Sure. I just I just point like I I just flip him off. <laughs> well, good news, I don't see it. <laughs> It's just in time for you to swing around and you see she's already at the other door. <laughs> All right, so not that it's gonna turn out very well, but instead of me trying to climb on top of it, I'm just gonna like try and time it to where I can see the other group and then just let go and let the force just throw me. Roll acrobatics at disadvantage for the dismount. That's what I was thinking too. <laughs> Actually, that's better than I was expecting. Um, that's 22. All right, with a 22, Go ahead and describe the dismount and where you want to land. You can land anywhere between the edge of that room and the center of the next room. <laughs> Fantastic. So I'd like it to be uh, just because I think it'd be funny. I don't see Carmilla flipping me off, but I let go probably at the worst time possible, and I barrel straight into Emotep and then just land right on the other side. Oh, <laughs> buddy. Oh, man. Surrounding this weasel right now. I know. Rang weasel wrangling. It's not going anywhere. <laughs> I just grab its tail. <laughs> All right. So as you land, the weasel jumps up, sees you land behind it, and is looking frantically as it's being surrounded in all directions. And the weasel is going to attempt to bolt full speed ahead in between everybody's legs. Okay. Well, the weasel's got to roll. <laughs> It's, I'm rolling right now. Because <laughs> I'd like to try and grab it and just chuck it into the bag of holding. It's a nat one. Oh, yeah. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. So do we get a chance to snag it? What I'm going to say for a nat one, it runs full speed ahead. It makes it through Phantom's legs and barrels into an oncoming ghost that has its arms outstretched towards Phantom. Jumps up out of surprise from the sound of banging furniture going on in the room behind it from the poltergeist and jumps right into the grasp of the ghost that then possesses the weasel. Uh -oh. no. uh, y'all, we needed that desperately. None of y'all say no. That was my head. That's true. Uh, how close are you to dying? Not as far as I'd like. And then everyone else roll initiative. Oh, oh no. Man. Okay. Gotta love it. We are the outcasts, the misfits you might say We deal with the nightmares that you run away from every single day We know the world is a gruesome little place But us outsiders, we've developed quite a taste For the grisly and morbid, the ghastly and the horrid We know it's awful dreadful, but we like it just another haunted night Shrouded with unearthly fright So when you're oh so terrified You know who to call The world is falling apart We'll never take you to heart So monsters and creatures and spirits and specters and all Let's all have a ball And also, I saw evidence of him being up to his old tricks again. We're going to have to put a peed in that because we have other things to deal with. But he also had a message for me. Rainer, the prince of death, the prince of undeath. So we're going to have to put another peen in that and pucker that sucker later. All right. Your peen is a little hooer. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> no idea. All right. He and put his peen in, like, all those, like, different little story bits. I don't, I don't know, man. Yeah, the peen. <laughs> I was also listening to that and being like, hmm, I bet Grayson's going to say something. 